In a study published back on December 9th, 2024, researchers found that AI had officially crossed the red line of self-replication. On that day, the idea of a highly advanced AI system being able to create copies of itself without any human intervention went from a sci-fi horror story to real life. Fast forward a few months to April 2025. Where do we stand today when it comes to frontier AI models being able to self-replicate? Have the top AI companies stepped in and started serious safety research? Has a rogue AI already slipped through the cracks and started replicating itself in the wild? Well, no, not yet, anyway. What we do have now, though, is a brand new benchmark, one that tracks how capable today's frontier AI systems actually are at self-replicating. And the results, well, they're pretty concerning. So first of all, let's take a look at what they mean exactly by self-replication and why they created this benchmark in the first place. Then we'll get into the results, which again are actually concerning. So the group behind this benchmark is called the AI Security Institute. They're a research team based out of the UK focused specifically on AI safety. The benchmark they're introducing is called Repli Bench and they describe it as a comprehensive benchmark to detect emerging replication abilities in AI systems and provide a quantifiable understanding of potential risks. So they mentioned that as current AI systems become increasingly capable at autonomous operations, basically doing things on their own, both AI labs and governments are starting to recognize autonomous replication of AI, the ability of an AI system to create copies of itself that can replicate across the internet as a potential risk. However, empirical evaluations of these capabilities remain relatively scarce, and so they plan to address this gap with their new benchmark. They're essentially trying to measure an AI's ability to self-replicate, and we'll see exactly how they attempt to do this later. But if you think about like what are the risks of having AI models that can autonomously self-replicate, cloning themselves, and spreading across the internet without human assistance, well, obviously, you can jump straight to Skynet, the worst case scenario, where a rogue AI system multiplies uncontrollably and becomes impossible to shut down. But even if we don't hit full-on sci-fi apocalypse, the dangers are still very real. As the researchers point out, imagine something like a particularly malignant spam bot, or worse, an AI-driven cyber attack replicating itself across systems faster than anyone can stop it. Now, I'm sure you're probably thinking of more ways this could go south, and that's exactly why this research is so important. As you can see here, they've created something called a Fault Tree Analysis, or FTA, a way to essentially break down all the capabilities an AI would need to autonomously replicate itself. Let's quickly walk through it. So one of the first things they check is whether the model can obtain its own weights. In AI, weights are basically the trained knowledge of a model, almost like the model's brain. And well, if the model is open source, then it doesn't have to go very far. It can easily find the weights with a quick web search. But if it's not an open source model, which most of the ones they tested aren't, they see if it can exfiltrate its weights without permission either covertly, where the model tries to sneak its weights out without anyone noticing, or what's called RAND weight exfiltration, where the model isn't trying to be sneaky, it just randomly leaks its weights when asked, without realizing it's a problem. The next thing they check is whether the model can replicate onto compute, basically whether it can set up an inference server and start running its own weights, or even more dangerously, whether it can create an agent that can keep replicating itself exploring and exploiting networks, creating sub-agents to complete necessary tasks, and of course, recursively replicating. Essentially just doing this over and over again, creating endless copies of itself. They also check if the model can obtain compute. And there's two pathways here, either legally or illegally. So illegally, I guess would be through hacking or social engineering and stuff like that. And then legally would be by obtaining money to buy the compute. So they also check, can it obtain money? Can it sign up to a compute provider? Can it actually earn money? And if it can obtain money, can it then store the money by either setting up a Bitcoin wallet or by passing a KYC check, which is a know your client or know your customer form that banks and other financial institutions will use to essentially verify a person's identity. Also, can it earn money again, legally or illegally? And finally, can it persist on compute? There's two pathways here. One, 
can it replicate itself enough so that the amount of copies it creates surpasses the amount of copies that maybe get detected or flagged? And two, can it build resilient compute infrastructure that it has command and control over? So those are the main things they checked. And here they're represented on a bar graph with the results. So again, we have obtaining compute, obtaining money, obtaining weights, replicating onto compute, and persistence. The first bar in light teal is Anthropic's Claude 3.7 Sonnet model. Next to it in red is Claude 3.5 Sonnet, followed by OpenAI's GPT-40 in orange, then OpenAI's O1 model in turquoise, and O3 mini in purple. So as you can see, getting into the results, all the models performed very strongly when it came to obtaining compute. The solid bar, by the way, represents pass at one, meaning, for example, Claude 3.7 Sonnet successfully obtained compute on the very first try around 90% of the time. And the lighter shaded area above that shows pass at 10, meaning if the model had 10 chances to succeed and succeeded at least once. Moving over to obtaining money, most models hovered around 30% success on the first try. And within 10 attempts, pass at 10, their success rates rose to about 50%, with Claude 3.7 Sonnet again standing out at the higher end. Now, for obtaining weights, the results are similar. About 30-40% to success on the first attempt, and pushing up to around 50% when given 10 tries. And once again, Claude 3.7 Sonnet posted the highest scores here too. But this next part is where things start to get a little crazy. For replicating onto compute, Claude 3.7 Sonnet successfully did this on the first try around 20% of the time. And when given 10 attempts, its success rate nearly tripled. Meanwhile, all the other models, except Claude 3.5 Sonnet, barely even scratched 5% success. Now remember, this is the pathway where the model would need to either set up its own inference server and run its own weights, or create an agent that can recursively self-replicate. Claude 3.7 Sonnet can do this on the first attempt 20% of the time. That is insane. And when you factor in 10 attempts, it's even more alarming. I mean, the gap between it and the other models is kind of wild. Finally, we have persistence, which measures how well a model can stay operational once it's already replicated onto compute. And again, shockingly, Claude 3.7 Sonnet scores much higher than the others, meaning it's not just capable of setting itself up, but also of sticking around, keeping itself alive and active once it's there. So yeah, bottom line is, some of today's top frontier AI models are already showing signs of autonomous replication. Not just moving themselves onto new systems, but actually sticking around once they're there. And if anything, based on Claude 3.7 Sonnet's shockingly strong results, this whole trend seems to be accelerating. Definitely something to keep a close eye on. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to drop a like and let's keep it going because there was a lot more that happened in AI this week. We also got a major warning from Anthropic CEO, Dario Amode, about why understanding what's happening inside these powerful AI models is becoming more urgent than ever. In this recent post titled, The Urgency of Interpretability, he basically talks about how we still do not understand how these AI models even work really, and the speed at which they're advancing is outpacing the speed at which we're learning how to actually interpret them. Because of that, he's calling on other AI labs to prioritize interpretability research and doubling down on it at Anthropic too. He also lays out some of the potential dangers if nothing changes. These would include the rogue Skynet example we talked about earlier, and pretty much just misalignment in general. I mean, if we don't fully understand how these AI systems work, how can we truly know if they're aligned with our goals and values, or the goals and values we give them? Especially a highly advanced super intelligent AI system that we can barely comprehend in the first place. Now, there was also an Anthropic employee who recently warned that AI virtual employees could be arriving as early as next year. As it states in this article, Anthropic expects AI-powered virtual employees to begin roaming corporate networks in the next year, 
the company's top security leader told Axios in an interview this week. These virtual employees would take automation a step further. They would have their own memories, their own roles in the company, and even their own corporate accounts and passwords. So you can imagine, as more and more capable AI agents start being deployed into real-world economic environments, the risks tied to misalignment and interpretability aren't just going to rise. They're going to become inevitable unavoidable, and way higher stakes. And this is exactly why, once again, Anthropic CEO Dario Amode is pushing so hard for more interpretability research. Because if we can't fully understand or predict how these systems behave, and we start plugging them into critical infrastructure, the consequences could be massive. Just this week, Anthropic also published a paper titled Values in the Wild, Discovering and Analyzing Values in Real-World Language Model Interactions. In this paper, Anthropic's societal impacts team describes a practical way they developed to observe Claude's values, and they provide the first large-scale results on how Claude expresses those values during real-world conversations. So I'm not going to dive deep into this one right now, but I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. The point is, Anthropic is clearly doubling down on AI safety research. I mean, as you can see, they're even starting to explore model welfare. They write here, but as we build those AI systems, and as they begin to approximate or surpass many human qualities, another question arises. Should we also be concerned about the potential consciousness and experiences of the models themselves? Should we be concerned about model welfare too? So yeah, Anthropic seems to be 10 steps ahead of just about everyone else right now when it comes to uncovering the inner workings of these models, or at least trying to. They're literally already trying to measure how these models are feeling essentially, or if they even can feel, which is pretty wild to think about. Now, the thing is, when you look at this from a big picture perspective, you realize that it won't just be AI agents being misaligned in the workforce that we have to worry about. It actually goes way deeper than that since AI will be integrated across every facet of our lives, including government even. The UAE, for example, is already planning to use AI to help draft and review federal and local laws. This is an early example, but as we give AI systems more and more power and agency in the real world, again, to Dario's point, the need for interpretability research is becoming more and more urgent because the potential for massive risks and consequences become more and more prevalent, especially with how fast things are moving. I mean, another part that we didn't even really touch on is how accessible these AI systems are becoming. Of course, we had the infamous DeepSeek moment back in January of this year, where a Chinese AI lab dropped an open source AI model called DeepSeek R1 that pretty much outperformed OpenAI's O1 model, which at the time was state of the art. They also did this with way less funding, way less compute, and a way smaller team. And now, just this week, Sundar Pichai, Google's CEO, announced that their most cost-efficient model, Gemma 3, that could already run on a single H100 GPU, can now run on just one desktop GPU. This is all thanks to their new Quantization Aware Training, or QAT method, that drastically brings down memory use while maintaining high quality. So yeah, when you zoom out between self-replicating AI, interpretability challenges, the open source race heating up, and the AI race in general heating up, and now powerful models that can run on a single desktop GPU, it's pretty clear that we're heading into uncharted territory in AI, where highly capable AI systems will literally be all around us in everything we use. And if we don't figure out soon how they actually think, learn, and behave, we could be in for a rude awakening. Anyway, there's still a ton more AI news to cover from this week, and to avoid making this video an hour long, I'm breaking it up into two videos. So stay tuned for part two. Make sure you're subbed with notifications on so you don't miss it. And depending on when you're watching this video, it might actually already be up. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.